we need to get to the first bit of business. A little later, we'll show you one of Jason's craziest projects. We've got a lot packed into the next half hour. Today is no different, except we're going to take a look at two auctions we featured last week and see how they did. This year, the ACO has opened up the use of telemetry in the GT2 class. What does that mean? Well, that means that the car can now get, tell the crew everything that they need to know. And Corvette Racing built this car knowing that they had that experience in GT1. The car actually has 200 sensors on it that they can send information back to the crew with. But here for the 24 Hours of Le Mans, they're keeping it simple. The only thing that they're monitoring. We have lots of places to bring you stories from Copart customers. And all you visited more than a dozen states with us. Well, Calvin, the GT storyline so far in 2010 have really written themselves. There are more cars, more teams, and more manufacturers. Right now, because we just need to get through the first couple of laps early, First and foremost, we have to survive this. Marco Andretti is making his 24 Hours of Le Mans debut, the third generation of Andretti to do so. But Marco, you're right in the middle of your open wheel season. What is it about this event that made you just have to come out and play? Well, Jordan Burmeister comes into the 2010 season following that incident in York. After Laguna, the Yokohama Tire Company looks towards the environmental aspect of motorsports in every area of their global greening initiative. And that includes racing up a mountain. The team sets its sights to 14,000 feet above sea level to the majestic view and a true test of environmental technology. I was talking to John Field on the grid prior to the start of the race and he said his plan was to be aggressive, but he also said that as soon as there's a caution, they're going to come in, put Clint behind the wheel of the car because John, in addition to starting the race, he also wants to finish this one anyway. For weeks now, we've shown you Copart auctions as people from across the country and across the globe have taken home great buys. Patrick Long, you told me after qualifying you weren't pleased with your result. You've got to be happier with the race. Andy Lally wasn't even supposed to be racing here this weekend, but Andy, here you are and on pole nonetheless. It's the first time the GTC cars have been on a street circuit. What's going to be the key to survival? Again, Magnuson, Johnny O'Connell clinching the GT1 championship, eighth win of the season, but this is your final Petit Le Mans GT1. Is it a little bittersweet? Risi Comtizioni's Jamie Malo was able to set a new track record on the way to that pole position, Jamie, by over half a second. You captured it. Simon Pagano, fantastic stint for you. It's been such a team effort this weekend. How did all of the pieces come together when you weren't the favorite to win? If you don't have time to check out our Waiting Around the World auctions in the next couple of days, we understand we have a couple more that might fit your schedule. Simon has pulled it to a stop. Robin Hill calling the shots. That's who you're hearing on the radio team manager. He's going to put in 12 seconds of fuel. Jamie. There certainly is a lot of excitement. Crew members making their way down. Johnny Cocker getting the helmet off right now. Johnny Cocker, you made that pass right at the end of the final lap of the race. How hard were you pushing out there? Uh, you used the word kids when you refer to all of your co-drivers. How much push are they putting behind you? Well, I spoke with Dirk Mueller earlier on the weekend, and he said he felt like that penalty was unwarranted. He had been warned, but he felt like it was just good, dirty, but clean racing. He said if he had the chance to do it this weekend and got into another one of those situations, he would be doing it. Historically, what we've seen in endurance racing is that it is, in fact, all about endurance. It's about making it to the end in conservation. However, what we saw here today at Petit Le Mans was a 1,000-mile sprint race. The cars were all out, literally coming down to the final lap in the GT class. That begs the question, what's it going to be like when we get to Sebring in just a couple months' time?